I know the regular streamer treatment sounds kind of like. What does that even mean? I'm I'm confused. Like, uh, well, weren't these women like, fired uh, for from their jobs or something for some reason? Uh, I think Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu was, but or Nita Sarkeesian is just a YouTuber, I believe. Mm. Or like, he's a media weird. critic. That's her title mm. in this. Uh, hey, that's what we do on this podcast, basically. <laughs> also true. Yeah. So. Release Depression Quest, a text game focused designed to convey the experience of depression through a series of fictional events based on part on Quinn's experience with the illness, positive reviews, but face backlines, online dislike format, emphasizing intrusion into gamer culture. What is it? Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Um, no, you're good. I was subjected to several months of harassment after its release, including rape and death threats. So the usual stream of treatment. Uh, Quinn documented the harassment she received and spoke openly about it to open interviews, including the posting of her home address online. Mm. Yeah, she got doxxed and, and harassed, essentially. Mm, okay, okay. The usual thing we do to people, not just women. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why I called it the regular streamer treatment. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Well... <laughs> That the, the worst part is that happens to streamers that are not even like controversial. Mm. Yeah. So. Let's see. Uh, she's not a perfect victim. Law and Order SVU is recent headlines. Heard said as much about herself, but her air say she's not making this up. I let Law and Order play on TV while I do mindless things. Blah blah blah. blah. The comfort of the TV show in the background. While hearing somebody say this words, she brought attention back to a less uh, paradisal, paradisial reality. Oh, Jesus Christ, you don't need to put this big ass word in here. Okay, you're not going to get SEO points for that. Why the fuck do they do this shit? Just just put fucking like a reality check, bitch. Uh, where Amber Heard, whose name has been in a neon bar, neon bar sign, a sign light, let's see, at the back of my head for the past two months and is still glued to... The, Vitro oh my god bro the, the fucking vocabulary is immaculate yes it's great but holy fuck i'm a normal person let me just read people keep pushing for her to be cut from aquaman 2 and posting pictures of johnny depp wearing a crop top 38 years ago you can't always do the online thing uh i don't like i don't like the vision this is depicting this is already kind of painting the picture like, oh, Amber Heard might actually be a victim. And it's like, no, we don't we don't we don't fucking care. No one remembers. The <laughs> yeah, we don't care. It's crazy. Yeah. Apparently in the <clears throat> first sentence in here, that's actual fucking information. This bitch says no one remembers what the trial was really about, but you couldn't escape a single gory detail. What? I, I'm pretty sure the whole point of. Like, people standing behind Johnny Depp is because they understand it? Maybe I'm fucking slow, but... That and Johnny Depp is <clears throat> idolized by millions of people everywhere. Like, they want to side with him regardless. But then it's also that he's a victim. Like, yeah. he's a victim with concrete evidence of, like, physical and mental abuse from this woman. Like, yeah, and men want to rally behind him because there's oftentimes men just want to be... uh respected in the same regard that women are when it comes to these type of cases and stuff like that even as far to go as extreme i mean as we could go as extreme as uh parental custody hearings even where it's like nine i think the statistic is like eight or nine times out of ten the mother gets custody of the child even though sometimes the mother is clearly unfit to be the uh parental unit of this child so it's like mm -hmm. to see a man uh, win a court case over a woman that's clearly like yo come on now the fact that it took like this much for for it to like be such a serious thing so i don't i don't see the comparison between this and gamergate at all let's see where and her testimony into millions of likes okay where johnny depp worshippers turned her Amber Heard's testimony into uh, millions of there lives. There it is. There's or the Instagram. bias. Yep, there it is. Yep. There it is. And and I already knew because the lady who was writing this, um, her name is Ashley Barhand. I already knew from the 
first from the way this opened up is there a way i can dislike this like this is yeah hold on let me see i i kind of want to look at the community section here and see what people are saying oh, um okay. i feel like it's going to be mostly women like like hey look you might be out the window on this one i hope that's what it is let's see um garnishing views Instagram and YouTube alike and everywhere else. But contrary to what information overload would have you believe, this trial wasn't about who people are, who people are on Twitter or find more personable um, or who has been more in more nostalgic childhood films or who looked hotter in the 90s. It was a defamation trial about three vague sentences in a 2018 op-ed where Amber Heard references her personal experiences with sexually violent Johnny Depp. Yo, she, vague sentences is crazy. Yeah, she does not vague mention... Vague sentences is a crazy way to justify it. Right. As she, justify does, she does not mention Johnny Depp in the op-ed, but he sues her for $50 million in damages to his reputation. reputation. But before this trial, Depp tried suing for libel... Uh, causes after a British tabloid, The Sun, called him a wife beater, a phrase a UK judge found to be accurate after deeming 12 counts of alleged assault being proven. It's unsurprising that the judge ruled this way. You've probably heard Amber's face, you've probably seen Amber Heard's face purple with healing bruises or Johnny Depp's bleeding middle finger, which he gives conflicting accounts. Yeah, I'm done reading this. <laughs> I'm done reading this. This bitch needs to be fired, bro. For real, for real. Honestly. Ashley, you did a terrible fucking job. You're a terrible fucking human being, honestly. Uh, let's oh, see. Oh, that was a little... That was uh, no, very she, aggressive. No, nah, when people do stuff like that, when you jump out of the window for something that's very clear, very cut, that's like if I told you, Plank, the sky is green today. And you tried to tell me, Jay, no, like, I saw it this morning. Like, you didn't see it five minutes ago, but you're like, Jay, no, like, it's it's clearly still blue outside. Like, like, no, 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 no. I just checked. It's green. And anything that you've ever believed before is actually incorrect. Matter of fact, I think it's so strange that you wouldn't believe me, a black man who has no reason to lie to you whatsoever. Why would you not believe me when I tell you the sky is green outside? It's like, well, well, Jay, that's just not, not, not possible. Well, see, I don't know who you think you are to tell me, an African-American, what the sky looks like outside. That's essentially what this is. So to be able to jump to such a circumstance so fucking quickly within three paragraphs of your article, what else are you doing that with? Like, how extreme can you be? Like, you're jumping so far. Like, my nigga, you are, like, really reaching. And so that's what I mean. So I don't know. I, I don't even want to read the comments. This is kind of disgusting, to be honest with you. Uh, especially when... Uh, no, especially when Gamergate is a... is a real legitimate thing that involves the Me Too movement and the mistreatment of women in the workplace. This is not one of those scenarios. This it, it just isn't. It's not Amber Heard being a victim. It's her victimizing Johnny Depp. And it's unanimous proof across the board. Like, there's multiple testimony, multiple witnesses. Um, the fact that her statements are conflicting on her own accounts, not just Johnny Depp's. Like, she, she wants to sit here and say... Uh, which he gives conflicting events uh, accounts on how he severed his finger. Heard through a bottle, it smashed up against a closing door, though he agrees that he used the dripping wound to write Amber Heard a threatening message upon the wall. He sent vile text messages about Amber Heard that his attorney said were inspired by literary giants like Hunter S. Thompson, which I never read any of Hunter S. Thompson's books, but because Johnny Depp reference it, references uh, his attorney references the author in such a manner, I may have to look into it because I assume the description is probably ridiculous for any of his books. Let's see, including a text to actor Paul Bentley that says, I will fuck her burnt corpse afterward to make sure she's dead. Now, okay. Now, Blank, let me ask you a question. Would you say, if you're, I think I can definitely speak on this, but would you say in a toxic relationship between two people that really don't fuck with each other, that are constantly throwing insults at each other, do you think that somebody who said something like this to the other person, that person would want to be around them? 
Uh, well, I wouldn't, I, I have no idea about any toxic relationships, but, uh, mm. no, I don't think I, I mean, me personally, but then again, I, people in, in this, in this world are very strange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, this woman, Ashley, who wrote this article labels that as, a, as abuse. Okay, cool. You can, yeah. Apparently heard live through, uh, Depp's proven abuse, but her name and the abuse victims she represents Oh, now, so, so she represents something imperfect because we're crying, because domestic abuse is emotionally knotted, and Amber Heard said she still loves him. What? And these words are thrown away. Our stories are scrutinized, denied, because why? Is it about his movies again? Bitch. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? She's mm. not... This, this woman, Ashley, is clearly not addressing that... Listen... You want to take Amber Heard's side and believe everything that she says about Johnny Depp? Cool. But if you're going to do that, how are you not going to sit and listen to this man's story of the countless physical violence this woman has instilled on him? So it's like, stop. Because now you're, this article is literally Gamergate in reverse. It's just in reverse. Because... If a woman tells you she's being sexually harassed in the workplace and you choose not to believe her and then because she files multiple complaints, you fire her because she's just quote unquote disrupting the office, that's Gamergate. But if this woman sits here and villainizes Johnny Depp based off of his words and his testimonies because she only wants to listen to the side of Amber Heard purely off the basis because she's a woman and literally no other factorial reason whatsoever. It's like, come on, come on, seriously, seriously. So Ashley, you should be ashamed of yourself. I, I listen, these people at Kotaku hire some of the wildest people and some of the strangest individuals to write some of these articles. But honestly, I don't think you should write an, I don't think you not only should write, but I don't think you should utter another word ever again in a professional setting at all, period. Sorry. Uh, wow. No, seriously. Like, this is just... This jump to this conclusion is just so crazy bias. Imagine the other articles this woman has written with that same extreme. How can you provide any sorts... Any source of, like, actual entertainment? Like, I don't understand. Like, what are you doing? Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up this the rest of this woman's articles. Because usually they, they reference... Hold on. Let's see. Scroll toward the top. Okay, so Ashley has written about Pokemon card player uses comically large cards at a championship. Uh, momentarily forgot the state of the world with Steam's giant summer sale. Um, read this before you break up over video games. Yeah, I don't. I mm -mm. Uh, gaming's latest AI woman recycles the usual sexist tropes. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Let's see. Let's see another one. She's also the author of an article called The Best Sex Games on Steam According to OnlyFans Creators. Come on now. Come on now. That's Come a, on now. That this, a funny article. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, <laughs> online voice chat is often a sexist nightmare, but it doesn't have to be. Ashley, I get that you are a woman and you want to write about your experiences as a woman. I get that. And you want to relate to these other women that are clearly more important than you. I understand that. But yo, check this out. You are really, really, really pushing this. I'm a woman. Hear me roar agenda. Like, <laughs> You just, you got to stop. You got to stop. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to Twitter and tell you off. That's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Now you're, now you're doing, <laughs> now you're a little too much. Listen, I'm going to pull the now Johnny you're... Depp. I'll be like, I'll, I'll fuck your corpse and make sure you're dead. <laughs> but all jokes, okay, all jokes what... aside, all, obviously these are, these are clearly jokes, clearly jokes, clearly, right, Ashley? These are jokes. These are just speaking in satire. We're just talking about hee hee ha ha funnies, right? All right, cool. So now that we got that out of the way, I just think you need to just not be so extreme. And I think until you find a a reasonable place to speak from or at least recognize that there are multiple sides to a story, it's like, yo, maybe you shouldn't be a journalist. Seriously. Like, everybody knows there's three sides to a story. There's the left, there's the right, and then there's what really happened. There's the truth. So, uh, yeah. For you to be an actual, like, paid published journalist 
at this video game company like doc has been like this for a while yeah. like i don't i thought it was just a funny article i mean it is it it's, like... it's definitely he he ha ha funny but gamergate is not gamergate is a very serious situation that you know involves the the over the overarching disrespect of women which is not cool which is not cool mm. and i mean to be honest for gamers anyway or for people who work in the video game industry who i assume would be playing video games the mistreatment of women should be recognized very very quickly because i'm sure i don't know about you plank but as a gamer vagina has a pretty high value wouldn't you say <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> you see where i'm going here you see where i'm going and it's just like we like women so why do we treat them like we hate them so i i don't understand i don't understand and i had this conversation with uh who, did I, who was i talking to about this oh it, i was talking to dj about this the other day when when i had the back and forth with him i was like yeah you know it's not it's not that we don't like women it's just we like what they can do for us and that's it <laughs> I mean, that's that's real life. That's what it is. If you have a woman in the workplace and you're somebody who's socially inept and has no idea how to speak to women, you're probably going to mistreat that that coworker more than likely. You're probably going to say something because you're socially inept. You don't you don't know how to speak to women. You don't know how to speak to people, really. You're probably going to say something that's, you know, you're talking out of the side of your neck and you may not think anything is wrong and she may get offended by it. So... You know, next thing you know, you're calling her, you know, a see you next Tuesday and calling her a bitch and all this other stuff. And you're telling your coworkers that she's difficult to work with and all this other stuff. That's that's Gamergate. That's essentially what that is. And then she goes to complain and gets fired because you don't know how to behave like a human being. Mm. So, Ashley, I want to let you know, you're literally never going to hear this, but I want to let Ashley know that yes, it's okay to have this stance, sure, but I think you're real. There's definitely some bias in here, and when you read this out loud, and when when you're just like looking at it at a distance, it's like it's very clear. It's very very clear. You chose not to see a second side to the story. So, I mean, you know, but who are we to know? Who are we to know, really? I don't know shit about shit. I don't know shit about shit either. So, um, Kotaku, you guys should definitely have a conversation with Ashley though, for sure, for sure. I mean, so, Kotaku's always been a clown fest. So. Yeah, honestly. So let's let's see. Um, <laughs> Kotaku writer admits that <laughs> admits they support abuse. Color me shocked. <laughs> I just I'm I'm so interesting. This is very interesting. <laughs> so I'm scared to keep scrolling in this in this thread. To be honest with you, there's some there's some already some wild stuff in here. So, but uh. Anyway, yeah, that's mm. that's that one. It's a very interesting article. Thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead and talk to talk about uh, Artesian builds because I know you know a little bit more about this than I do. Oh yeah, there's a video by Christopher Yee explaining that uh, ever since the the controversy of Artesian builds mm -hmm. doing the uh, not being able not uh, fulfilling their promise to give their partner a free computer, mm -hmm. they now ever since that debacle their whole ip is gone they're going bankrupt and there are lots in different areas i believe in california and some other other places where they're selling off their shit like and even pcs that creators were supposed to get mm. from their partnership mm. They're 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 so down bad that they are selling their whole they're selling their brand, their logo. Uh they have some agreement with a studio for like twenty thousand, they're owed twenty thousand, mm -hmm. but it's not confirmed if you can even get that. A judge would have to uh <laughs> a judge would have to give you that, but mm -hmm. they probably won't. Damn. And that's that. I mean I don't I don't really know what else <laughs> Artesian has. I mean, they're done, right? Basically, I would think so. They're, they're, it's over. Yeah. Jake, uh, Jake Lucky says the Artesian build story just can't be made up. 
uh, fail to do a giveaway, get exposed, go bankrupt, auction off all other people's PCs, and <laughs> you never sent in. <laughs> you can never send in to a bankruptcy auction. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And now Noah Katz is charging back small business owners on PayPal. Whoo! This is oh brother. Yeah, PC gamer tweets. Uh, Artesian Builds leftover computer parts are being sold at an auction following bankruptcy filings, including over 400 cases, 360 CPUs, and 359 PSUs. So, uh, you know, if Artesian Builds has some cool stuff, hold on, let me see. Do they link it? I'm trying to. I'm trying to come up on some parts. Wait a minute now. Uh, I don't. I don't <laughs> think you want those parts because you have to buy the whole lot. The thing uh, with that is you have to buy. You the... have to buy them in bulk. You have to buy everything from oh. that facility, or from that auction. Excuse me. That's excuse crazy. me. So you'd be, you wouldn't be buying one. You'd be buying all of it. Mm, I see. Well, so they're doing an auction, not a garage sale. So they must not be desperate enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm serious. I, I, yo, when you're, uh, I mean, when you're desperate, you you be everything must go. Everything must go. Type of sale, you know. Um, it even says on their official Twitter, notice uh, Artesian Builds has recently filed for bankruptcy. Um, builds inventory bankruptcy auction. For those interested buyers and qualified bidders, please review the attached notice. Um, and it's just some legal documents and stuff like that. We are sad to announce that effectively, effective now, we are freezing and suspending all activities. Ongoing, uh, let's see, ongoing is analysis by outside council for reorganization to ensure fair treatment of clients creditors and employees we expect more info by the month's end and this was in march and they haven't tweeted anything since except for mm. the bankruptcy yesterday so or on friday excuse me um at this point we're examining a potential employee-led buyout of the company thank you for your support and that was on march 5th yeah you see how that worked out so um it's interesting, man. Uh, I honestly think the entire company did not need to suffer uh, for one guy's horrible, horrible decisions. Um, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Couldn't be any worse than what G Fuel does, though. I mean, yeah, G Fuel was moving very strange. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. Mm, so that situation, I, didn't we talk about that situation? Yeah, we did. Like we a talked week about ago? it. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I don't know what's up with these gaming companies suddenly wilding out, but. Hey, hey man. man, it just shows you what they wanted. They wanted the, the gamer bucks, the gamer dollars. That's what they wanted. Yeah, that's what they wanted. <laughs> I mean, at least they provided a product, I guess. Yeah, I think providing Even a product and a, and a service is way more important than, you know, everything else. I mean, politics aside and the way you treat your customers and clients aside, it's just like, oh, come on now. Come on now. What are we? Yeah. What are we even doing here? You guys are running a business. Run it successfully. Like it's not that hard. That actually uh, gets me uh, thinking about like my current situation. You know, with my shitty boss, and like the stuff that he thinks is like, yeah, we're not, we're not gonna do things that are gonna benefit our business. And it's like, okay, you might as well just fire me now <laughs> because we're gonna, the company is gonna run out of money. It's already been a month since all of this information has been shared what 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 more are we supposed to do hey man we just need a <laughs> we just need some better companies i guess or more companies like i guess 100 thieves right because 100 thieves uh they're owned by nade shot i think mm. majority of it i mean granted they have a lot of sponsors and shit my friend uh, wes we is a uh i think he's a producer for 100 thieves oh nice yeah hold on let me um let me pull up his give me one second let's see 100 yeah. thieves wex yeah he's uh, an executive producer at 100 thieves nice yeah congratulations so, to him yeah i know that, that guy's i think he just got his promotion a couple months ago too um yeah i should have asked that guy to put me on but you know, whatever <laughs> True. It's, I, it, it always turns out i i know somebody that's actually worth knowing <laughs> like way after the fact so yeah but uh i can't really talk to him like that because you know that's uh one of my ex's friends so you know whatever Ooh. yeah so that's a whole situation but i mean you know whatever you never know who you know until you know him or i guess you don't true. Know him. also so, true back that, to my point though mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, that's my bad 
<laughs> no, it's alright, good. It, I think, uh, like, 100 Thieves is doing it properly, you know what I mean? They have they have their hands in the esports, you know what I mean? They're doing their own merch drops and shit. Mm. And even, you know what's funny, uh, Jay? We were talking about this on a earlier episode of the Patreon where we wanted more gamers to make games or more big YouTubers. Mm. 100 Thieves is now making a game. I saw that recently from mm. Nadeshot. Um, they said, hey, we're making a game. I don't know if it's going to be good. I think Dr. Disrespect is also making a game. Either that or that was the YouTube name, mm. uh, the YouTube uh, video name. But he said, I mean, he's also worked with Dr. Disrespect. Uh, I'm talking about mm -hmm. he's worked with a company to make like a kind of game. And he had streamers play it like this mm. was a long time ago, though. I don't think it was uh, like a one V one kind of third person game. Interesting. It was uh, it was pretty solid. Uh, I see. I enjoyed watching it, but I probably wouldn't have played it. Hmm. But yeah, they're making. I guess people are making more strives to make games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or more YouTubers, right? Yeah. I think it was Doctor Disrespect on his stream last week. Um, he was actually really upset about it. He's like, "Where are the games? Like, it's a hundred and twenty billion dollar industry. Obviously, you know, like the clip was taken out of context because he had way more to say. But he was like, "Yeah, where where are the games? Like." It, we, it's been all year and he has nothing to play. Like Elden Ring was great, but that's it. And, uh, you know, people are obviously coming for him because they're like, he only plays FPS games. And it's like, no, but he's, he's actually right. There's aside from indie games, like which the average indie game is like three to four hours long. So it's like, you're not really getting much replay value and joy and like too much enjoyment. Obviously there's going to be a bunch of these games that are fun. And some of them that are probably going to be wacky and stuff like that. But it's the bigger budget games. It's like, yo, where they, where, where they at? Where are the video games at? Yeah. So, you know. But uh, I'm yeah, just I mean, waiting for like the next big thing, and it's it's probably not going to come for a long time. Like a game where everyone just enjoys it. I I just don't think that's that's going to be coming out anytime soon. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to be stuck with our the th five fucking brs for the rest of our lives essentially mm. until something interesting really drops um, yeah, i think we've been waiting for a new gaming trend for a minute um because before br we had uh shit what was the we had like a couple of major tropes it was like open world games and then yeah uh, open world microtrans oh and the uh, oh yeah microtransaction loot, bo loot boxes. boxes yeah that was the era before that and arena shooters yeah oh my god yeah that was <sighs> Jesus Arena Christ. shooter is a big trend. Yeah. So now that we're going forward, it's like, damn, man, like, what can, what else can <clears throat> we do? Where else can gaming go? I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, we can go back to making good games. I hope the success of Elden Ring can really show people that not only single player games uh, really hit now here, but the fact that no, not a single microtransaction is in the game. So it's like, it's a completed game that works, that sold millions of copies. Yeah. So it's like, please take that into your your decision making and be like, well, these guys did this. Let's go ahead and do that because I cannot stand another game that's going to come out and just completely waste 70 of my dollars. I will be so upset. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. It's, it's probably still going to be a long time. Oh, yeah, I yeah, think we're definitely. making advancements towards it with Unreal 5. I think right now the the trend is kind of like, hey, we're going to make a very stunning looking game, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be a game you're going to play a lot. Yeah, true, true, true. That's kind of what we're, we're which, at right now. Which, to be honest, I'm okay with. I just started Death Stranding, and I'll tell you this. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fabulous looking game. It's amazing looking. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Yeah, I have I have no idea what's happening in the story. I'm I'm barely able to pay attention. Like, will I ever replay this game? Probably not. But am I gonna play it all the way through? Yeah, more than likely. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it. None of this makes any sense. Like, where can we get a progress report? Anything? So, I mean, I think the <laughs> Kojima is working with uh, Xbox now, right? Just, just yeah. because you bring up Death Stranding, and I think that game, that game's probably going to be a hit. I, uh, I know this is going to be one of the most like, oh well, brain dead take, but I feel like Kojima is going to give us another banger, 
And I, I think uh, so too. Hopefully they don't make him churn it out like they did with uh Konami did with Metal fucking Gear. Metal Gear, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's just it's I, I hope it's gonna be a solid play, you know what I mean? Kojima like, always loves to do abstract shit, so Yeah, I would like to think so because now that you bring it up uh unreal 5 is gonna be crazy like I, I can only i can only imagine like all the indie games and stuff like that and obviously you know i'm a little biased because i want to play all the scary games and shit like that in vr sure sure of course but like now that ease of uh ease of use i think the term is yeah ease of use is, yeah. is way more simplistic with unreal 5 from what i'm reading uh we could get a turnout of indie games that are just absolute bangers and they may not have like the most amazing sales of like millions of copies or anything like that. I mean, they may get hundreds of thousands based off of, you know, particular YouTubers or marketing or anything like that or word of mouth because those games are going to be dope. Have you seen um the the Michael Jackson horror game? Michael No, I haven't seen Oh, that. bro, bro, it's $2 right now. I got to buy it for you. It's actually it's so fucking cool. It's called Escape the Aiwoki. Um <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Is it on Steam? Yeah, it is. Oh, and, I see it right here. And so it's a game that's uh the monster in it looks like Michael Jackson. And he actually makes the like hee hee sound when he's looking for you. And the <laughs> jump scares are fucking terrifying. And the worst part, the absolute worst part, is that your microphone is picked up in the game. Oh, it's on it's on all the it's time. It's on all the time. And I love games that do that, but I also yeah. very very much hate those fucking games. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that. I I have no idea if you have any interest in playing that. Maybe we could do it for like a Patreon thing. Yeah, um, we could do it for a Patreon. Thing. Yeah, it's like 2 bucks, bro. Like it's on sale right now. I'm like hell yeah, we wild. It. Oh, brother DJ. Oh, DJ. Hello. Oh man, speaking of disappointing things. Um no, I'm just playing. Um, no, that's that was a crazy, <laughs> crazy transition. But nah, man. Yeah, the the game is is super fun uh, to watch. I watched uh, a couple people, a couple of streamers play it. Uh, so I'm very much in trying it. I'm very much interested in trying it. There's also um, Escape the Back Rooms. Um, some of I the, haven't heard of that one. Oh man. So I, so obviously you've seen like the back room videos, right? No. <gasps> oh, plank. Oh man, yo, we gotta do this for our pay. I'm, we're gonna do a reaction. We're gonna do a reaction for the Patreon, guys. If you want to see some of that unfiltered Patreon content, uh, I totally forgot to plug the Patreon. Make sure you oh, go over one? to Pat yeah. Make sure you go. No, there's a couple of them. Make sure you go to Patreon.com/slash Canon Culture so you guys can check that out. Um, me and Plank are, uh, you know, I can't wait to show you all of these games I discovered because holy shit, mm. some of them are are actually really terrifying. Um, are you a are you a fan of um? Horror games and stuff like that? Not really. Oh, okay. uh, I'm not okay, a big gotcha. horror guy. Mm. I like Resident Evil, but I don't. I don't really consider those games horror anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're at least for the most part. They're just kind of like yeah, action thriller. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, Escape the Aoki. We'll we'll do that for you know a Patreon. You know, it's only a couple minutes long. I think. I think it's like an hour or two. In total. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for two bucks, I mean, getting some jump scares out of it, sure. Why not, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to play it. You're going to play it. By the no, way. I know. I, I okay. <laughs> believe that was the point. <laughs> I just want to make sure. So, uh, yeah, I got to show you these backrooms videos, man. Uh, they're they're kind of trippy. They're super crazy. It's oh, basically... you mean that one you reacted on the stream? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I so... know. I know. DJ showed me that video. I know uh, yeah, 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 man. Those are, those are crazy. Uh, they're all right. And there's like different editions of it. Apparently, there are... Uh, so I was looking into it, and apparently there are stories of other people who have fallen into parallel dimensions like that, and they believe it was a lot of people believe it's like a dream, but like some of them, some of the stories are a little too consistent and uh, with like other things that they have going on in their lives and stuff like that. So it's really strange. Uh, this one lady said she got in a car accident and she hit her head on the uh, on the dashboard, and she ended up in a back room. And which honestly, in simul if you use the simulation theory, like that life is a simulation essentially, or we're trapped in a bubble or 
there's a big dome over the sky, whichever version you believe in. Um, I truly believe that there are certain things that are unexplainable that definitely point to the evidence of we live in a simulation. And I feel like the back rooms and my life in particular is definitely a fucking sitcom. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I say this all the time, like, you know, whoever is writing the story of, of my show really, really fucking sucks and he needs to be fired. So, um, yeah. Ending up in one of these back rooms and trying to figure out how to escape it is is probably extremely terrifying. So, um, yeah. But yeah, man, we're definitely gonna have to check that out. But I would love to see some of these games in Unreal Five, uh, especially now that VR is becoming more of an accessible thing. I looked, and a VR two is only about two hundred bucks, um, which is very inexpensive considering at one point in time the Oculus was like what four fifty or something like that. It was like yeah, a, it was insane. Yeah, it was a ridiculously high number, and it was just like, damn, what is this? A year one PS3? Like, what the fuck is this? So, and then there weren't a lot of games to play. So, you know, obviously, I'm going to use mine for evil. So, uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm very I'm very 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 excited about gaming going forward with indie stuff, but not AAA stuff. So, you know, I mean, I'm interested in a few things. Uh, but I mean, it's going to take a long time for this, these things to be developed and stuff because mm-hmm. Unreal 5, what came out, it was teased like a year or two ago Yeah, and from just now. a few months ago, yeah. And it's just, it's just being worked on. So yeah. we're going to have some, probably a couple mediocre games coming into 2023 and then, uh, 2023 is probably going to, I mean, they're going to have a few bangers of course, but anything after that is probably... They're probably gonna make some some fire, some fire one one time kind of play games, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. still fire nonetheless. I mean, let, I, that's an interesting thing to bring up. Do you feel like, uh, as far as games, like, would you prefer something that has replay value, or the first time it's just a really really good game the, the first time through? Uh, I played a lot of both, mm-hmm. um, but for the most part, I like games I can play a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I Battle Royales kind of have that, but they also don't. Mm-hmm. Because if the game, if the fundamentals and the way they they change certain things is not properly done, then the whole game is kind of fucked. Mm-hmm. Like, I think every Battle Royale does that. They just end up fucking whatever good quality thing they had, like quality game they had. Fortnite is kind of trying to doing the reverse of it. They're trying oh, yeah. to go back to where shit was a little simpler. Yeah, Fortnite is doing some great sh- is doing fantastic shit. I mean, between all of the fucking cool skins and stuff like that, although I don't like how like some of them are gone forever, that kind of irritates me, but I mean, you know, that's the whole hey, you should be playing right now type of thing, but instead I'm grinding on yeah, the Apex. The FOMO. I, yeah, exactly. Major major FOMO. I was watching PM stream and uh Adam was playing was it yeah, I think it was Adam he was playing no. with Ariana Grande. No. What no, was that it? wasn't. That was uh, Jack. Oh, the, Jack was playing with Ariana Grande, and I was like, "Damn, like, I want the fucking Ariana Grande skin, man! I want the Ariana Grande skin. I want the Zendaya skin. Like, damn, man! Like, bitches, fat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I want the Guan Yu skin. Oh, that that shit. was like two years ago, I oh, think. Man. That skin. Yeah, see, you've you've got a. Uh, you actually paid attention to Fortnite way more than I did, so you know, I played the PVE mode and was excited about that, but. I mean, you know. Yeah, I pl- I only pl- I played a decent bit, but I didn't I wasn't like super heavy into it. I got se- a heavy into it season ten, mm-hmm. and then that's chapter two when we played a lot, Ooh. and then I guess uh, when no builds came out too. Those were the the times where I was playing a lot. Oh yeah, no builds is uh has drastically Blessing. revitalized my uh my yearning to play Fortnite. So. Yeah, you it's know. really it's really fun. Yeah, I, I fuck with it. So, uh, I would love some more of it. I can't I can't wait for more of their content. Like, I almost considered buying a battle pass just so that way I could like unlock Darth Vader. Uh, Darth Vader is sick. Yeah, Darth Vader is sick. But then that requires getting to the end of the battle pass, and I'm already having trouble doing that in Apex. I don't want to do that in Fortnite. It's actually way easier in Fortnite. See, hold on now. I still am. It, Bleach Brave Souls is having its seventh 
anniversary <laughs> next week. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm dead serious. And then Dokkan two weeks after. So, and Ito, I spent a lot of money to get Ito on, on Genshin. So, nice. uh, yeah, man, I can't, I can't keep up with, you know, I think I'm spending more money on video games now that they're free to play. <laughs> True. So, which is so fucking stupid. I spent eighty five dollars to get Ito, and uh, honestly, yeah, I I see Ford uh, Kuki, and I didn't even get his weapon, so I haven't even started summoning for that yet. Um, Ooh, you're fucked. Yeah, I see three <laughs> Yan Fei. Um, no, not Yan Fei. Chang Yun. He's C four. Yeah, C four, C five. Um. <laughs> So yeah, man, it's 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 not a fun time over there. And then for Dokkan, I have have been so disconnected from Dokkan ever since they started introducing like way too many units way too fast and then spiking the difficulty with a lot of the events and stuff like that. It it just got to be like way way too tough to keep up. Now I just do a daily login, I collect my stones and I turn the game off. Um and then for Brave Souls, I'm so disconnected from Brave Souls. I'm pretty sure my guild on there has started voting me off. I think they're at like a 4-10 split for voting me at off. Uh, since Not in know. Brave Souls. Yeah, yeah. So, Because um, one of the guys was like, yeah, we should take this more seriously, even though it's literally like a level 1 guild. Like, we're the guild that when you first start playing, you're supposed to select. So when you when you first start playing Brave Souls, they're like, oh, we're going to introduce you to guilds. You have to join a guild in order to continue playing the game. But you can immediately leave right after and you get like, you know, it's an achievement. You get stones for it. You get rewards. Like, so that way they do a tutorial and introduce you how to do it, right? We're one of those guilds. We're one of those guilds you just click on, you join. Cool. That's it. Leave immediately after. No problem. Now... All 20 slots are filled, and everybody is suddenly using a six-star resurrection character. Like, I think we only have, like, maybe four or five rookies on the team now. Which is crazy, because I still have some of the best builds in the game, but even, like, months later. But still, like, I, I can't keep up with all these games, man. Like, mm -hmm. this shit is getting to be a little bit too much. And then, of course, you know, making video game content... It's like, man, if I spend more of my time playing all these fucking free-to-play gotcha games, I ain't got no time to do shit. So, you know. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know it was that that serious over in Brave Souls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brave Souls, the, these mofos, like, they will boot you from your own shit. Like, and I'm I the one who, tell. like, yeah, I'm the one who, the original guy who owned it before me, uh, we started playing together, uh... I think his name was like Azil or something like that. And we were chatting in the in the guild chat or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you seem like a really cool guy. And then we were playing some of the PvP together and like stuff like that. I woke up the next day. He made me leader of the guild and then left. Uh, I was just like, what the fuck? You can leave me a One Piece guild, first of all. Like, <laughs> yeah, not the One Piece. So, yeah, so, you know, I don't know shit about One Piece. And so then I started like making changes i changed the logo i changed the like the uh the motto and stuff like that i was like everyone's welcome i created a discord for it so that way people could like join the discord now these motherfuckers are trying to vote me out i'm like damn damn not after all you did for them <laughs> yeah right like <laughs> so it's just it's it's crazy man like uh i don't know i don't know i'm i'm ready to give that game up but i'm just having too much fun playing it and then Funny enough, that game is on its seventh year. Bleach Immortal Soul is going on its second or third year. Still not nearly as pop popular as uh, Brave Souls. It, they created that in order to uh, pick up where Brave Souls leaves off. But the problem is, is there's a vacuum of Bleach games. And there's just tons of Bleach fans everywhere. With nothing mm -hmm. to do and nowhere to go. So now that one game is actually superior and it's like you have full action movement. It's not like a turn-based game or anything. That's the game that we stick with. Immortal Soul is a turn-based game that nobody wants to fuck with. So it's not nearly mm. as popular. I mean, I don't know. Bleach Brave Souls has never hit top grossing for anything. That's usually like Dokkan Genshin, uh, uh, Fate Grand Order, um, some of those other games. You know, those yeah. hit top grossing, but Bra Brave Souls is making enough money to make it to a seventh year. 
Yeah, so, I mean, it's still doing well. Yeah, and especially in the mobile game space where, like, games come out every single week. Like, there's a new version of Flappy Bird and Angry Bird competing with each other for some reason. Like, holy Flappy shit, Bird's man. Crazy. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's very astounding to me that this company is not only keeping up with it. And when I go to the K-Lab website, they're working on three other fucking games all at the same time. And those Damn. games actually do hit top grossing. So, Damn. yeah, like, why are they even still working on Bleach for some reason? So, Jesus. Hmm. All right. Yeah, the mo- I'm learning that the mobile game, like, market is so competitive. It's it's crazy. And then apparently they've made millions of dollars now putting Brave Souls on the PlayStation platform. So, Damn. yeah, the only problem is a lot of us, like, longtime players can't uh, copy our uh data from the mobile game over to the playstation version and vice versa you can't pick up your account because they're like oh yeah it's going to be unfair to those players that are just starting on those platforms well there's also a fucking co-op mode and a pvp mode where we fight those same fucking people like and they have no chance they none because the game didn't come out until the sixth anniversary until well after the sixth anniversary actually so all of the versions of ichigo all of the versions of orikiora grim Jiao, all the ones that are still viable in competitive play you can't get them because the gotcha banners don't go back that far <laughs> so you know you're just kind of you're kind of fucked you're kind of stuck mm. so you know what are you supposed to do but anyway um yeah i know i got i got kind of ranty and didn't really mean to <laughs> no it's all good yeah so and that's our mobile game update yeah that's our that's exactly what it is um the last thing i want to talk about today is uh san diego comic-con is coming up um i don't know if there's any interest in that usually i don't i don't give a shit i i give a shit about the uh the movies and stuff like that Mm. But the only thing I really care about is the DCEU and the and now that Discovery is like really pushing for like, hey, we need to be at Comic-Con this year. Marvel's going to be at Comic-Con this year because it's going to be the first one back since 2019. So it's going to be a very, very pivotal year of like all of these halls, especially Hall H, because that's Marvel's usual hall. So they're going to announce the rest of their lineup for phase four. And we're going to see where stuff goes there because now that they have pandemic schedules, you know, and they're able to figure out like what goes where and promise promising us Black Panther in in June of 2022, obviously two years ago, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, um, but I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about seeing some of the video games and stuff like that that are going to get announced from it. Um and I want to see what Discovery is going to do now that they're, you know, driving Warner. So we go see what happens, man. Hopefully they get us some, some good shit. Hopefully they but, get us some bitches, to be honest with you. like. No, not me, but <laughs> anything else, 100%. Yeah, they really want to consolidate the DCEU and give it a, a continual story and stuff like that. Like they want to focus on main ca- on on single character stories without having these huge ensemble films in the way unless they mm. feel it's necessary towards telling a bigger story which that sounds great that sounds amazing that sounds fantastic you <laughs> we know? all know how the last one ended oh lordy jesus man so uh i'm inf- i'm in- very interested to see where black adam is gonna go um i'm kind of interested in seeing what they do with the flash movie i guess um because this was supposed to be a a uh, con- what is it a continuity reset, so we are gonna see maybe Flashpoint, maybe New Fifty Two, maybe the Justice Lords, maybe Injustice timeline. I don't know, but uh, maybe we'll get Batman Beyond <laughs> one day. Oh, uh, good luck in that. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I don't know, but uh, shout out to everybody over there. Uh, they're really, you know, shout out to Discovery. They're doing that damn thing. So reset the yeah. whole fucking timeline honestly true yeah so you know but i haven't really been yeah i haven't really been into uh comic book movies and comic book stuff in a while like since Loki. no me either yeah i'm I'm a little i guess joker but oh yeah yeah yeah. joker was fire yeah of course joker was was great um i like i didn't see that uh my bad uh what is it was it birds of prey 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that either. That. But I was very excited for it. I was like, damn, I, I should probably watch that, but never did. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna watch that either. Yeah, no. I mean, when we finally get around to watching the Batman this week. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that, but I mean, it'll get watched. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably have to watch it in what, like, hour intervals? Because there's no way I'm sitting watching this movie for three hours. I I know for a fact this movie is not entertaining enough to hold my attention for three hours. Somehow Endgame was able to do it, which, funny enough, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day. uh, Yesterday, actually. Endgame was the last movie I saw in theaters. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then before that was Black Panther. I literally never even go to the movies anymore. So, I don't either. I don't even know the last movie I watched in yeah. person. Must have been a minute. Uh, fuck. Was it? It was. It was mine was probably also Endgame. Mm. Yeah, it was Endgame. I'm pretty sure. But before that, I don't even know. That's probably that of... fucking Transformers movie. Oh, that, that one with the with Shia LaBeouf and he's like Oh no, not Shia LaBeouf. Is it uh Mark Wahlberg? Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, oh, that my one. Lord. That one. That was that a minute. Was not good. Damn. <laughs> Ooh, not good. That's crazy. Such oh, I guess No Way Home too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw that at home. <laughs> there you go. I mean it is on DVD. Yeah. That's, wow. It's pretty insane. So, <laughs> uh, but let's get to one more last thing. I, I I found this and I thought you might think this was interesting. So, uh, guys, if you're watching the video version, obviously this is going to be the part where you want to tune in and, and uh, pay attention. I actually found a Elden Ring live action trailer. Have you seen it? I have not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, and you know, maybe we, maybe we do a little bit of a reaction for the, uh, for the, uh, Patreon. Cause you know, I think that'd be dope. So, yeah, yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. You guys can catch that over at patreon.com slash canon culture. Um, so I put that over in the, in the podcast chat so we could go ahead and check that out in a, in a few minutes. But other than that, I mean, I wanted to speak on that a little bit, which is why I, I posted it in there. So obviously, you know, we have like a series of pretty decent video game based movies lately, right? Um, and one that recently came to mind was Borderlands. Now that Borderlands has, I think, uh, Kevin Hart is Roland, uh, Jack Black is is uh, Claptrap, and then I don't know who the other characters are. How do you personally feel about, do you feel like whenever they make a video game movie that it's low-key disrespectful to the video game? Um, not necessarily, but for the when they do, it's usually not, not good. So I guess Mm -hmm. not the attempt, but the result is usually disrespectful. Right, right. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see Uncharted, so I don't even know if that. Also, this this trailer is strange. Oh, it is. Uh, a little bit. Hmm. I don't know why you're watching it right now. You gotta save that for the Patreon, my man. What are you doing? It was only a minute. Uh, I I was like, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. I don't. Ew. I don't. I don't know how I feel about it. Mm. You think you can make one better? No, but then again, I don't even know how to edit, so I don't think I can make it. Well, that's fine. Better. I mean, let me ask you a question. You've played plenty of Elden Ring. What would you want a live action Elden Ring movie to look like? Like, what would you even? Well, y- you know, I think Elden Ring is such a a strange like template that i don't know if a elden ring movie would be interesting i mean it'd be like 100 percent action for the most part maybe a couple stills you know what i mean a couple panels of like the area or whatever Mm -hmm. maybe you see like some of the the factions you know what i mean get a little bit more in depth with that right right you know what i mean maybe you see some character stories i'm Um, just trying to point at the only thing i want to see is radon versus millennia that's what i want to see I want to see that. Maybe, but that's uh that's kind of a thing that's not really delved into in the game at least. Mm. Perfect. It's vague enough that the movie can cover it and it's not accurate. 
or it can be accurate. You know what I mean? Like, I know it is. Right. It could be accurate. Yeah. So why not? There's a decent amount of lore about it. I just don't know. I mean, they'd just be fighting, really. Mm. I don't know how to. I wouldn't know how to to choreograph that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I would. Uh, for me in particular, I mean, I always draw inspiration uh, from a lot of stuff I do from movies, music, and video games. Uh, so I think an Elden Ring movie would be pretty sick if it was like, I think a Bloodborne movie would work a little bit better, to be honest. Um, that is probably true. Yeah, I, I can make it a Victorian era horror movie. Uh, that'd be pretty fire. But I think Elden Ring would probably be a a uh, tragic adventure story. Uh, it's like two adventurers, not just one, uh, going to search to become the Elden Lord. Uh and they end up burning the burning the uh, elder tree, you know. Mm. I think that's the that's the ending I would go with. Or uh, one of them becomes a god uh, and has to fight the other one. That would be really dope. Um, you know, I just think uh, some of those stories would be really cool. Or maybe uh, one of the bosses is actually the main character because even when you start up Elden Ring and you see like uh, some of the the background stuff going on and you could tell there's like very rich lore here. It's like, damn, this would be a dope ass fucking movie. Mm. So, you know, uh, same way I would, I would see a, uh, well, they need to remake the, the original three Lord of the Rings movies. Cause those are, those shits are weird. Uh, when you watch them nowadays, uh, but shadow of Mordor and shadow of war, those would be amazing movies. Um, I think the Arkham series would also be amazing movies, but, I mean, you know, those have kind of been, you know, parodied in, into into hell at this point, so into obscurity. But uh, yeah, I can't. Let me see what else. Uh, what other movies would you pick uh, out of video games? You want an NBA Two K movie? Yo, I <laughs> I actually recoiled in my seat, <laughs> and I like my face. My if you had seen my fucking face, you would have been like, oh. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> my face fucking winced, and it was like in pain. Yikes! <laughs> you what? You don't want to do an NBA 2K movie, man? That'd be bro. Fire. We already watched the NBA. There's no point. That'd be fire, man. Come on. They already did a documentary on fucking Michael Jordan. Like, we don't need any. We don't need a movie. What would we do? I mean, I don't Wouldn't know. do shit. Figure it out, man. There's, there's where there's a will, there's a way. We will get it done. So, yeah, okay, I would uh I would like to see a Horizon Zero Dawn movie. I think that would be pretty fucking fire. It would be way more entertaining than the video game, that's for sure. Um, Maybe. Yeah, I mean, but then again, I say all of these things because they seem simple in my mind as far as like playing out the story. Because we have multiple Tomb Raider movies, we have Uncharted, like these adventure esque type of games with connections and characters and stuff like that and of course we have the last of a series coming so clearly like these are these are stories that we're capable of telling it's just somebody got to tell them you know so you know i really want a uh, resident evil 8 that'd be a fire fucking movie they're making a dlc for resident evil oh thank god thank god you get to play as uh the the monsters now in, <gasps> in the mercenaries mode Oh, not the mercenaries mode. Not that. Oh. Oh. Mercenaries isn't that bad. It's pretty fun. It's not, but like it's not what I wanted. It's not I mean, what it's I still you still get to play with them. I guess. I still get to play the game if I close my eyes and boot it up. I can play any character I want that way. So Also true. Yeah, I don't have to pay what? 40, 50 dollars is probably going to be. Yeah, I don't have to pay that much no, I'm money. I'm pretty sure the mercenary one is free. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. It's Capcom. Actually, it might not. Be. It's probably not going to be free. But okay. so still, nevertheless, who knows, my brother? Who knows? Who knows? Video games are in the toilet. Movies are in the toilet. Everything is taking too long to come out. The pandemic really shook shit up. Everything is too fucking expensive. My depression and anxiety are at an all time high. And this podcast is pretty much over for today. Anything that you want to add? Uh, no, that's about it. I mean, that Elden Ring trailer was kind of weird, but hey, there it is. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, guys, uh, we want to thank you for listening on whatever platform it is that you're listening to, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Google uh, Podcast, 
or if you're listening to the uh, video version or watching the video version and listening to the audio. I don't, I don't fucking know. And we also want to say thank you to all of our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We absolutely would not do this show without you guys. Just, just to be really real. There's only nine, maybe 10 of you. Uh, on some weeks we get an 11th person, but Hey, look, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are the reason why we keep doing this. We also want to thank, uh, uh, Dr. Down Bad for joining us today. Thank you, DJ, for listening to us live. Um, and you know, we'll see you guys on the next episode next week where we'll be talking about, um, well, probably something, Ron. I don't know. Something. Yeah. We'll be talking about something. Somebody's going to fuck up somewhere in the next seven days. That's for sure. So truly yeah huh but with that being said uh we want to thank you guys for listening make sure to keep it canon